wading the warm, shallow flats of our southern estuaries and casting surface lures in search of whiting is without a doubt one of my favourite summer pastimes. I just can't get enough of it. It's amazing how shallow these fish can be found at times. I think a lot of anglers tend to wade right past the best action as they push out into deeper water, often spooking good fish in the process. I always start in the shallowest margins close to shore and the bulk of my best whiting action occurs in water between about ankle and knee deep. If you're getting the legs of your shorts wet, you're probably out too far. Make no mistake, some of the biggest and most cunning whiting will be found in water barely deep enough to cover their backs. I'll always try to set myself up to fish with any breeze at my back. This greatly extends my casting range with light surface lures. I firmly believe that the further you can cast, the more whiting you'll pin. Not only do you cover more water with long casts, you're also presenting your lure to fish that have no idea of your presence. Keep moving slowly too as you cast ahead, constantly covering new water. As you wade, no matter how quietly you do it, you'll inevitably spook fish. These alarmed fish flush ahead of you and in turn spook other fish, effectively creating a dead zone around you. How big that dead zone is depends a lot on how much fishing pressure the particular waterway receives. But trust me, the further you can cast beyond your own personal dead zone, the more whiting you'll catch. That's just a fact of life. There are two main types of surface lures that work best on whiting, little cup-faced poppers and walk-the-dog style stick baits. Each one has its day, but as a rule of thumb, I prefer the more subtle action of the stick baits in calm, clear water, while they tend to go for poppers when it's choppy or stirred up. But don't be afraid to experiment. Rules were made to be broken. Each of these lure styles needs to be worked a little differently. The killer presentation with cupped face poppers is a constant and reasonably brisk pop, 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 pop. Remember, you're not chasing GTs. You don't need to rip hard and create violent bloops and chugs. Just a nice steady pop, pop, popping cadence that keeps a little bit of spray spitting up ahead of the lure. Often the best way to do this is to keep your rod tip up above the horizontal, but that can vary from one popper to another. Getting the best action out of a stick bait is a tad trickier. It involves bouncing or twitching the rod tip rhythmically while cranking the reel at a steady, slow to medium pace. Keeping the rod tip down below the horizontal can help. When you get it right, the lure bobs seductively from side to side. This action's called walking the dog. Some people really struggle with this retrieve at first, complaining that it's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. But once you crack it, it quickly becomes second nature, and it's a deadly way to catch whiting, plus a whole heap of other species. The big secret with whiting on surface lures is to keep the lure constantly moving. Don't pause it and let it sit like you might for brim or bass. Keep it popping or bobbing along, even if the fish are slashing and chopping at it. If you stop, Nine times out of ten, a following whiting will lose interest and simply peel off. Of course, if you raise a brim instead of a whiting, it's a whole different deal. But we'll save that lesson for another time. So just to recap, don't ignore the really shallow stuff. Wade as quietly as you can. Cast long with the wind at your back and work your lures properly with a constant rhythmic action. I guarantee that once the water warms past 20 degrees Celsius or so and the sand, silver or yellowfin whiting become really active up on the flats, you will start catching them this way. And when you do, you'll probably never want to catch them any other way. It's just too much fun. Until next time, tight lines and happy hunting. Thank you.